I'm having another one of those busy days. I'm in my van. The kids are in theater class. I feel really awkward because there's a big semi-truck parked right next to the van facing me. It's like one of those uh, like gas trucks or something, you know. Well, anyways, it's not a gasoline truck, but one, it doesn't matter. It's a big truck, and there's a driver in it, and he's in it, and I... And he's, and he's thinking I'm nuts. That's what he's thinking. That's what he's like. Why is that woman talking to her iPhone? He has no idea that I'm talking to you. And I'm overcoming some major, like, he thinks I'm a freak moment right now. It is, it is really odd. Be proud of me. I love you so much. I'm willing to look like a weirdo to others. All right. I cannot wait for you to try my Mima's Soy Curl Pot Pie. Oh my word. I've been through this recipe a few times now. I got it just where I want it. It's absolutely awesome. I did not cook it in the stove. Oh, guess where I cooked it? The Instapot. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. And I baked it off in my brand new Breville Smart Oven. Yeah. And I got to use my Breville immersion blender yeah i was like multi-appliance cooking mad woman in this recipe it's awesome it's awesome i never had to turn on my oven everything turned out great i was so thrilled okay let me just stop yapping and let's just jump into the video and i'll do more yapping while you're watching me put all this together now i got one thing i want to show y'all something something that i hold very dear to my heart but maybe not everybody's going to be into it. So if you're into stuff that's, well, I don't know. I just don't, I'm going to put it at the very end of the video, like after the uh, list of ingredients. You know how I do that? I do the outro and then I show the list of ingredients. And then right after that, I want to share something with you that is like, I hope I don't cry when I'm showing it to you. It's just something really cool and I love it. And anyways, and it has something, to, it has to do with this recipe, okay? All right, let's get cooking. I started out with about a handful or cups worth of dehydrated soy curls and I broke them up into little bits and I rehydrated them with one cup of no chicken broth, chicken broth. You know what I'm talking about? The better than bouillon stuff. And I let that set aside and then I jumped right into my pie crust. Now y'all know me, I am an oil-free person, but when it comes to making pie crust, I do not know how to get away around the margarine. I have, I don't know, I don't know, I just don't. So here, you know, I use margarine to make my pie crust. Easy as that. And if you want to know which one I use, I use Smart Balance with black seed oil. It's vegan. You can find it at every grocery store. Um, yeah, that's the one. And if you use uh, some other kind of vegan margarine, you know, that's fine. I just like smart balance because it tastes like margarine okay so I've got my pie crust going here now my pie crust is real simple it's like a cup of flour half teaspoon of salt and I uh, and then a third cup of vegan margarine and then I, I spin that around till it's um, you know mealy and then I add two to three tablespoons of cold water so and I always start with two tablespoons because sometimes two tablespoons is enough and sometimes I need to put the third one in. I don't know why that's so, it just is. But there you go. And then you after you add the water, it comes out looking like this. The dough comes away from the side and voila, I've got enough pie crust for one top crust. And then I smooth that out, put it on a plate and stick it in a plastic bag and put it in the fridge to chill to move on to my vegetables. Oh, there she is. There's my baby, my little iPod. Ooh, ooh. What I did here is I pressure cooked the vegetables in the iPod. Uh, I started with, I've got my rehydrated soy curls, which I drained off whatever remaining liquid there was. And that was about a half a cup of liquid. And I added more water to it to make one cup. Now I wanted one cup of liquid to pressure cook all my vegetables just right. That's all you need. And then to that, um, my family really likes potatoes in their pot pie. Yeah, duh. What family doesn't? And so um, you saw I put, what, I put like three small potatoes in there. 
couple of carrots, and then we love green peas in our pot pie. I've tried putting broccoli in there, but broccoli just, um, you have to cook broccoli separate, and it's kind of a mess, and I didn't like the way it turned out. On the spices, this is, I'm actually following my Meemaw's chicken pot pie recipe, and she would have used like thyme and margarine and, and a bay leaf and all this kind of stuff, and that's all the she would have used all the spices that it takes to make poultry seasoning. Well, I always have poultry seasoning left over from the holiday, so I thought, why don't I just use it? So I used a teaspoon of it and threw it in with some salt. Now, once everything's stirred up, I set the iPod ooh, ooh, to manual, left it at high pressure, and adjusted the time to <laughs> two minutes, baby. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so while that's going on, I got the the pie crust back out and, you know, dusted my, my counter and rolled that out. I have no idea how thick this crust is. I just rolled the crust out really thin. And then this is my little um, container that I'm going to use to bake my uh, pot pie. I've learned that in my Breville Smart Oven, I can use silicone bakeware. Totally cool. So, okay, I've got that measured off and put to the side. And I've got all this extra crust. And y'all know me. I don't get fancy very often. I'm just all about making sure that the food tastes good. But I had this extra dough, and I thought, I'm going to get fancy. This time, I'm getting fancy. So I got my little biscuit cutter out. And my biscuit cutter has this little scalloped edges. And I thought, I'm going to make little leaves. So, voila, look at this. Isn't this cute? I figured out I could take one round and get cut three leaves out of it. Look at there. Isn't that cute? Okay, so I did that like a hundred times. Got them all cut out. I'm about to speed this up. I don't want to bore you with me cutting leaves. There you go. Now, all the little scraps that I pushed off to the side, you can just roll that back up and flatten it out and make more uh, leaves, which is what I did because I didn't waste any pie crust here. It's really good. Okay, then I got my pastry knife and I lined up the leaves and I made, you know, that main vein in the leaf. You know what I'm talking about? I used it to make that main vein. Then I took the corner of my pastry knife and I made little side veins going along the main vein. See there? Do, do. Oh, I know. They're so cute. Now, you could, you know, leaf this out if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. <laughs> Look, aren't they cute? Oh. Okay, so I'll do that a hundred times. Now, I'll tell you, that'll take you about six minutes to do all those leaves because uh, I was two minutes on the pressure cooker. And, my, you know, the iPod is really good about going into warm mode after it's done cooking. So, it had like four minutes on the warmer. That's how I knew. Anyways, you release, after the two minutes, you release the pressure out of the vent pipe, and then you can open up the lid. Now, look, I want you to see my vegetables. They're perfectly cooked. The potatoes are fork tender. Look at that. But they're not mushy. That's important because we, have, we still have to put the chicken pot pie in the smart oven to bake for about 30 minutes to get that pie crust nice and crunchy. And so we don't want, I didn't, well, I didn't want mushy vegetables to start with. I want them to be just right at the end of the baking process. So my carrots were a little mushy. I could have cut them a little thicker. The carrot, the celery was spot on. Now I need to get my gravy or my sauce going for the pot pie. So uh, there's still some liquid in the pot. So I'm, I'm trying to get all the vegetables out and just get down to the liquid. And I'm going to make my sauce in the iPod. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, the truck's still sitting here. It's still, the guy's still in the truck. Yeah. Okay, so here's my Breville Smart Oven. And before I want to get, before I get my sauce going, I thought, you know what? I'm going to get my Breville hot and ready. You know, like me. <laughs> okay, so you just have to set it to bake. And then the... What makes the Breville a smart oven is that it remembers the temperature and time setting that you set it for the last time you used that cooking mode. So it was already, that's what, the last time I used it, it was to make the last pot pie that I made. Okay, so back to the iPod 
here with the rest of that water that the seasoned water from cooking the vegetables I threw in my flour and started cooking it now I made the mistake of washing something and my liquid kind of evaporated out of my flour <laughs> more than I needed it to so this is actually me making a mistake I should have just stayed right there and then I could have added that milk and I would have had this nice smooth sauce but I turned my back and my water got out of there and now I had this paste that I was fighting with and I was like man I messed this up and y'all are seeing it and I'm messing up my, my sauce and ugh. but you know what and I was like whatever you know what this is life right life happens so I got my immersion blender out and I was like ain't no more lumps you know what I'm saying so I got that smooth with with the revel and you can do the same thing nobody's gonna know just get out the immersion blender whip out the take out those lumps with it and nobody's ever gonna know that you got lumpy gravy it's totally smooth so I got that sauce to a boil to get it uh, to you know to make sure that it would thicken which takes like maybe a minute and I used the I didn't say this before because I'm all chatty but um, I used the saute feature uh, the saute mode on the iPod to get the gravy going and I used the low setting because it gets hot and then as it was starting to cool it started to really thicken so I thought I better go ahead and you know add a little water because I want this sauce to be loose uh, in the pot pie because it's still going to thicken some more during that 30 minute baking process you know what I'm saying and I don't want it to be like a clump I want it to be loose I want I want sauce to spill out when I break into it you know what I'm saying it's the way it's supposed to be okay so here's my pie crust I got all that gravy on there baby and then I just threw all those leaves on top I didn't have a plan I I, I feel like when I try to be fancy it just comes out I interrupt this lovely program to let you know that I'm having background issues the trucker has decided to turn on his engine and that's the rumbling you hear in the background so the trucker is still watching and now he has his engine going and he won't drive away <laughs> is that funny <laughs> I love it okay so back to this um, so I got all the leaves on there and then you want to make sure you have a baking sheet because the sauce will bubble out of your pan and make a mess all over your beautiful new smart oven and I and the smart oven is set to 400 degrees and I'm gonna bake it for 30 minutes so while it's baking we will dance <music> Check it out. This is what it looks like right out of this smart oven. Beautiful and crunchy. And check this out. I don't know why, because I'm not like a professional baker or anything, but those little leaves did not stick to that top crust. They just baked right on top. So when I started breaking into it, they were just kind of sitting on top. Oh man, but they were awesome. They were crunchy and it was so much fun to bite into this pot pie because they would just snap and pop in your mouth. It was, oh, it was beautiful. Well, they didn't snap and pop in your mouth. They snapped and popped in my mouth. They're beautiful. Look at that. Look at it. Mmm. Now, I couldn't wait to show you the pot pie and how well it was going to turn out. So when I broke into it, all the sauce was still pretty runny and it just kind of spilled out everywhere. But I promise if you'll let it, that's the leftovers right there. You see that You see that last little leaf there and all that little, we fought over that. That's three hungry people, two grown, an adult, a teenager, and me. We fought over that right there. It was, we wiped that out in 10 minutes. We all had seconds. That's all that this will feed right there. What was I saying? Oh, so if you'll let the pot pie uh, rest for about 10 minutes that sauce will thicken up and then everybody will be able to have some but if you break right into it it's kind of runny and it spills out all over the place and then you're fighting over the stuff that spills out of the side and you'll be fighting over the crust you'll be fighting over it I promise give this recipe a try the listing of ingredients are coming up next and again uh, I, I really want to show you something that's near and dear to my heart so hang tight right after the recipe uh, right after the ingredients I want to show you something
Okay, so I called this recipe Meemaw's Soy Curl Pot Pie. Now, Meemaw, my Meemaw, who's been gone uh, 17 years, was never a vegan, and she's never heard of a soy curl. But she made the best chicken pot pie that anybody could ever make. We loved it, and when she was gone, we and our whole family missed her chicken pot pie. But thankfully, she wrote it down. And a couple of years ago for my birthday, my sweet aunt gave to me for my birthday something that it made me cry, and I'm about to cry just thinking about it again. My grandmother's chicken pot pie recipe. This this is in my grandmother's handwriting, and it's in a glass uh, a glass uh, double sided um, frame. Isn't this cool? And I love this. I it's look at this. she she wrote it all. Look at it. I just love it. I look at that and I just miss my Meemaw so much. There it is. This is, I just love it. And she's got, it's, all of it's on here. You know, how she cooked the vegetables, all the spices that she used, um, how she cooked the chicken, how she would have cooked the, how she would have made the pie crust. And she wrote it all out. And um, yeah, so every time, <clears throat> Every time I make pot pie, I look at uh, Mimo's recipe, so I won't go wrong. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. Uh, you know, I figured all my uh, recipe hoarding friends uh, would appreciate this, and uh, I thought they'd find this cool like I do. So, anyways, I this hangs up in my uh, actually hangs up in my my office so that that I can just remember that what I'm doing here, uh, you know, I like passing on all the good stuff to y'all, and it reminds me that it's important to write down those recipes that please your family because one day you're not going to be here, and they're going to look back and they're going to still need you to uh, help them with their meals. So, anyways, okay, I hope y'all like that, and I'll talk to you soon. Let's talk about this pot pie recipe in the comments below.